I didn't think it was a big deal until he started his satin his finger down there. It was painful and he said that I would call others do that I can ask my friends in school. And that's how they do that. He's a normal father and daughter thing. My name is Rachel. I'm a student of Futa and I was sexually assaulted when I was eight. It all started on my eighth birthday after the celebratory party. Everyone went to sleep and I was in my room. My dad came to my room. I didn't think it was anything because you know he's my dad. Not like he usually comes to my room. You know the African parent thing. It's not like we were that close like that. So God well I was like oh. I wasn't like anything. I didn't even think anything. So it's just like you know nothing. So he came that night. So it was as if he was already waiting for me to turn it. So he was touching me. That day that day there was no it just was by phones, there was no penetration or anything down my vagina. So there was nothing much then. Progressively every day he would come every day around because sometimes it's not he would come and he would touch me i wasn't feeling any inconvenience because i didn't even know what that was i live in the village in a small town so there was no exposure there was no sex education and even if they are watching a movie and they show any sex but our parents would just send us out um, send us on errands so i didn't think it was a big deal until he started his satin his finger down there it was painful and he said that's how all fathers do that i can ask my friends in school yeah, that's how they do that he's a normal father and daughter thing then it's continued like that till penetration which was always very painful sometimes you um, hold my mouth so i don't shout and like that then i specifically told me not to tell my mom or else my mom is going to die and my mom is girl I wouldn't want that to happen. So I didn't say anything to my mom. I was always very moody. Sometimes it affected me, my education, my mental health and everything. And don't get me wrong, my mom is always available. She's an available mom because she works in a petroleum station then and we are always at that place she so and she takes care of us in the morning prepare us for school but because of the fear of don't tell your mom i couldn't tell her anything because i just knew what it was doing to me it was painful i didn't even know it was rape or an assault so I told, no, sorry. One day my mom was baiting me and she was baiting my lap and it was like very painful. I was shifting myself and she was like, why am I doing that? Is anybody touching me there? I said no. I said, am I touching myself? Is there any injury? Did I also myself? This or start that? I said no. Yeah, she said, maybe I'm touching myself, but I shouldn't touch myself. Fast forward, and 
because I started my period early in the at the age of nine. So yeah, back then I was like, I guess it's the old muscle that triggered it. Maybe it's normal. But in my village, I started my period very early than usual until the females there. I started getting very sick. I can't pinpoint the age, but it was let's say 10, 11, yeah. So I was getting very sick because it was just normal malaria and stuff. Then blood started vomiting blood. And that was when my uncle came. I guess my man called him. So he came and he took me to Lagos for okay. a treatment. So, I traveled down to India for a treatment. I was a leadership who came here. So that's the second struggle of my life. First, it was the assault. Then they came at the very same age with like, no knowledge of it, like, and then I wasn't even aware it was so something serious. It started getting weak, sometimes I would faint. They say, my village <laughs> people say it was village people that they should go for traditional things, blah, blah. And so thank God we have someone educated in my family because if not, so glory be to God, I survived it. I came back, I was staying with me, I didn't go back to the village, I was staying with my uncle. He is my dad. I I can call him that, but for this reference, <laughs> my uncle. So, I was staying with him. He has a son and a wife. Yeah, he has the name. Like, so, he was only able to have one child. So, everyone thought I was even his daughter. Like, maybe he has a daughter somewhere and all that. Everything was good. Then his brother came visiting. That his brother also lives at Tibora. He lives at Tibora. Not like we live together, but he lives at Tibora too. So we do see sometimes. And I always knew it was up to something. Because of the way he's always acting around me. So, uh -oh. I got his opportunity in Lagos because everyone was always going to work. I think it was during the only day when I was at home, he came around and he also assaulted me. I told on him immediately because if I didn't, that's true. I was scared it would continue and I bad enough. So I told my uncle he was punished. He went to jail. I don't know if he's still there. Right. Yeah, I was kind of pleased that he got what he deserved. Even though I wish my dad can also get that. At that point, I told my uncle about my dad too. I told him everything I had to face with him. And he said, we can't tell anyone because of my mom. It's going to run a marriage. Yeah. That for my mom's sake. He did say when the right time comes. Yeah. We will talk. Yeah, it's not yet the right time. So, that was it. Then I discovered I was pregnant. 
Actually, I was taken to the hospital when the rape with my uncle happened. I was taken to the hospital. I think they did some checkup. I can't remember. I don't know. They did, but I don't know what the test was. I wasn't given any drugs, though. I wasn't. So, I got pregnant. And I didn't even know I was pregnant, I baby boys. Pregnant. <laughs> well, what is pregnant? I don't have. I think I was around. I was 20, 13. So I should be around 13 and then. So. So then I went out 2014. So. I was pregnant, they tried to abort it, so they literally did everything. Drugs, injection, literally everything. The only thing they didn't do is open my stomach and bring out the fetus. Because, so, that I was, I entered depression, I had a therapist then, I had a therapist. I went for therapy session. My uncle is a very good man. He's a very, very good man. I mean, your relation doesn't define fatherhood. He was a father to me. He was a father, a brother, an uncle. He was everything. Yeah, he did everything. He took care of me. Nobody knew I was. So he got me a, a lesson teacher, coaching teacher, because I couldn't go to school. So I had tried because I didn't, okay, I went first time, but I wasn't interested in even with the gender or whatever was coming out of me. So because, <laughs> sure, when they were twin, two girls, and I hated them. I hated myself. I hated all guys, all boys. I even tried to kill my uncle son. Like any time there was an argument, I just bring out the knife because it was a boy. The only person I think it was my uncle. Every other male gender. I hated them a lot, whether it's a baby, anything. It wasn't really easy, like, it was, it affected everything in me. It took my childhood away from me, took my life, my body, my innocence, my because I knew something. I know everything happened. Yeah, for a reason. But I'll be so I had them. I tried to kill them. So there was a point they were taken away. I didn't get to see them. So I don't have them. I Continued my schooling. I did my work and so after my work, I think I was when I spent my money, panties, my and my auntie traveled. So I. I was going to travel and she took them before one died. I'm trying not to mention their name of SS. And that was even when <laughs> I realized it was AS. So um, apparently it was AS. So she was a fighter. She really fought for her life. And it still haunts me because we are good now. I love them. I love 
time so much because the one that is ten and one that is five. But I didn't get to but that it's not my fault. It's just I was I was standing and I was like this small when I was like I didn't even have body I was so I lost one thanks to my family. Thanks to my mom. The other one is doing very, very fine. Although even the my other one who doesn't know about them. Doesn't know about them. My mom knows about them. She doesn't know they are mine. She thinks it's like literally everybody thinks they are mine. But they do know I'm them. That's the one thing I appreciate. They let them know I'm their mom. And to them, I hope it's your dad. Well, kids. Who's their friend and process the only information. So, they are more than my dream is to. Oh. I mean, sure, although I can't prevent her son, but maybe because I can't prevent it, I saw it with that, like, it's not like I would know a pedophile or something, but I'm supposed to provide a resource for people that have gone through it, because my therapy, everybody, like, that's Every body that has gone through has literally in therapy. Like, it's a crazy, even, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. But sometimes things trigger it. It might be a movie, maybe when I'm watching TikTok, I will say something. The way. I always want to shout, but my mom says, no, I can't scream. So getting the pains, the trusting, the whole thing just comes out. Sometimes I will not even cry. Like I'll just be there for I just want to provide a resource and for some people that also have child to rape or people that were lured into sex. Like maybe small small children or 12, 13 years old have been a child. They might not necessarily have to be raped. They are in process. It might be maybe like some elders that just you know, they maybe with money or anything just to get laid with them. You go to my village, you see lots of them there. Small, small kids, children of primary school, children of years as well, having kids. So, to the fact that they don't. I feel sex education should be part of what is taught in school. They do hide the topic. Right. Because I had a discussion with but I do go very well. I do go on. So there's this child in my area. Because from small I love kids. So like, it was part of for this student boy. <laughs> this girl was giving birth. Then I asked her, said it's not mechanic. She was not raped though, but it's because she doesn't really know that. She got pregnant, she had to raise a, a child and she was raising a child. And I just wish we can have a better life and just let kids be kids. Those of us, our childhood has been taken away from us, our but I don't have anything against men anymore. Because my therapist really helped me. She did. Thanks to her. My family. Everybody. So. That's it.
that's my story from Ashford to surviving cancer. Twice I actually omitted the second struggle. Surviving cancer, losing a child, having to struggle with the demons in my head and all that. It does, it, it, it does affect my life, my past relationship. The first time I wanted to have normal sex, I couldn't. I was, I felt like I was pinned down. I closed my eyes and I just couldn't. And yeah, I was like, what is wrong with me? I tried in my first relationship that I tried to discuss it with the guy. He didn't really take it too well. He said he can't be with a woman that has a lot of baggage. And I can't forget that. That was the first time I know the me. I asked on Google, what is the meaning of baggage? Like, am I carrying a bag or something or what? So, and my next relationship, I tried to hide it. I didn't want to tell the person because I didn't want to scare him away. And the sex part was a good. He was, a, he was a good man, he was, but I guess he got fed up. He always wanted me to talk, but I was always scared that what if I talk again and this one to just run away. He said what is wrong, what is the problem? We eventually managed to have the sex, but I was just there. I, I just wanted them to do whatever I wanted to do then. This is my third relationship, which has been the best one yet. As I was growing, as I was um, getting used to the internet, seeing people coming out and all that, and like Jeff and Crew, they are both matured. I actually told them from the start so I wouldn't get out myself. So, if you want to stay, you can. If it doesn't, I have nothing to lose. So, I told them. But, except that, I didn't tell him it was my dad. Because I don't want him to leave. To have a perspective about my family. I didn't give him, I just told him it was a family member. I think you that's the person you meant here. So I don't give him I don't want him to have this. Maybe in the future, maybe when my dad gives me the opportunity to talk, to tell because I have other siblings too. Sometimes I want to ask them if you ever have two um, female and that siblings. If you ever do that to them to have always wanted to ask first. If I do, then that will give the whole thing out. Yeah. Maybe we are all just keeping quiet because why me? I'm the last female, I'm not the last boy. I have a male younger brother. I have a younger brother. I'm the last female. If we do it, what, what are the all that they've also gone through that? Because why me? They came before me in all that. I've always wanted to ask. So yeah, it did affect, it affected my love life, it affected my social life. I can't, I don't have lots of friends in this school. I only have one friend, one lady, one lady friend, one girlfriend, that's beside me and my boyfriend. He sent a child, a little girl. She's supposed to come here. Yeah, I told her that we'll be having a physical. So, I'm not free with kids. Thanks.
And even if I have kids as friends, but if they are it affected me, make I'm always even my classmates they think I'm a psycho or something. I don't relate with any of them. Only if we have group projects or anything. I'm always on my own inside the class. <laughs> of course not. I see him anytime I go. Yeah. Because I went for most and I just came back on Sunday. I still saw him. I, I I can't forgive him because the way he's even treating my mom. That's not right. She, she has totally neglected her. He has a new wife now. Just beside my mom because our house is split into two. Okay. And the second one is a new, you know, when the people build house and then it's a new one. So the other one is a new one. My mom is living in an old apartment while the new wife is living in a modern house with POP, this modern structure and everything. So of course, I can't forgive him. And like, he is, yeah, he's always acting like this puppet. Because last time I went home, just because I think I actually greeted her. I don't know their rules in the house or anything. It was something that I was just sitting down there. Like, I'm supposed to come and kneel down for her and he started cursing me or something. And he, he normally overreact when he sees the woman. Like, you know something you don't normally do and when they like just... So now, even with that, I can't forgive him and whenever we see those hands like nothing happens we've i've never disliked ever since i left my own town we've never had any account maybe to talk or anything so anytime i see him i can't forgive him okay. and the thought of him well doing same thing so I see this even makes me go crazy. I always we have little kids in my house, my cousins and all those in the house. So just yeah. and I don't think he will because he's a, he doesn't go inside the house again since he has not really new wife now. Doesn't perform his responsibility, he doesn't give my mom money or anything. He's just the new wife. So I have to forgive him. I don't think I can. Why should I? It's not like he wants for my forgiveness. So I can't decide I forgive him. He hasn't done anything that was forgiven.